Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactic Imperialis with part 3 of my analysis of Codex Dark Eldar. So I'm going to be looking at the Elite section today. Um, there are three pages of Elite um, and only one page of Troops, but that's for my next video. Anyway, let's have a look. We'll start with the Incubi. These guys are 22 points, weapon skill 5 basic, BS 4, strength and summoners 3, 1 wound, initiative 5, 2 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 plus armor save. So by Dark Eldar standards, these guys are actually quite tough with a 3 plus save. They are armed with claves. These are two-handed power weapons that give plus one strength. They also have night vision, power from pain, and fleet, same as every other Dark Eldar. For 15 points, you may upgrade one Incubus to become a Clavex. This gives you plus one attack, plus one leadership, plus one weapon skill, plus one initiative, and plus one ballistic skill. So it's quite a worthy trade-off, plus it gives you a character for challenges. He may upgrade his clave to demi-claves for 20 points. Uh, these are two weapons, which may be used either as a big weapon for plus two strength, or as two separate weapons for plus two attacks. Uh, nominate which each round of combat. So, for example, in one round you may choose to go, right, I need to be high strength here, so I'm going to go plus two strength. The next round I've got lots of enemies to kill, I'm going to go with plus two attacks. And you still have power weapons regardless. He may take a Bloodstone, this is a Flamer template, Strength 3, AP 3, Assault 1. And he may have the, any of the two powers, these both apply to Drazhar Master of Blades who I covered in Part 1, so go and check that out um, so you can see how that applies to him. Murderous Assault, this applies in Challenges now, so it gives him Preferred Enemy versus one independent character each round of melee. I'm sure this obviously would carry over into a challenge anyway, but this was how people would make challenges more natural before challenges came around. Onslaught is very powerful and affects the whole squad. For every to wound roll of a 6 made by the squad, be it Incubus or Clavex, you get another attack. These attacks do not generate more attacks, but it's still extra attacks with power weapons no matter which way you look at it. They may take a Raider or a Venom. A Venom has a transport of 5, Raider has a transport of 10. So be aware of your squad size before you pick that transport. Grotesques, weapon skill 4, BS 1, strength and toughness 5, 3 wounds, initiative 4, 3 attacks, leadership 3, and a 6 plus save. So, strong, tough, um, but um, very low leadership. So you want a character in there, there are two reasons for that, I'm going to come on to the other one. Size 3 to 10, they are bulky, um, armed with just a close combat weapon, night vision power from pain, no fleet though. A pain token is standard from altered physique, and berserk rampage. When there is no independent character in the squad, roll a d6. On a 1, every unit within 2d6 inches, friend or foe, takes 2d6, strength 5 AP, nothing hits, and then the grotesques are removed from play. So keep a character in there, A to stop the Berserk Rampage, and B to give them a half-decent leadership. Especially because they're 35 points, if they go and kill themselves, it's not going to go well. 1 may take a liquefier gun, which is strength 4, AP, d6, flamer. And you may upgrade one to an aberration, which gives you an extra attack and an extra leadership, so it's semi useful. Uh, you may take a Venom Blade, which is Poison 2, plus, a Mind Phase Gauntlet, which, um, if you didn't see my HQ video yesterday, uh, means that for every hit the aberration causes, uh, the person hit must take a strength and leadership test. If either of them have failed, he cannot attack. A Scissor Hand, which is Poison 3, plus and gives him plus one attack. And a Flesh Gauntlet, which is Poison 4+, plus and causes instant death. Um, I would probably go with something like a Scissor Hand or a Flesh Gauntlet, because I don't know if the others are quite as useful. Though a Venom Blade could be useful. You may take a Raider, but of course you have to keep the squad capacity up to 5, because they count as 2. Uh, that's just pictures. Racks are 10 points, and they are Weapon Skill, Business Skill 4, Strength 3, Toughness 4, 1 Wound, Initiative 4... One attack, leadership 8, and a 6 plus save. So pretty much like your regular foot soldiers from other armies. They're very similar to an orc profile, actually. Uh, size 3 to 10. Two poison weapons. So they'll have plus one attack in melee, and they're poison 4 plus. They have a pain token as standard instead of fleet. Uh, for every 5, you may take a liquefier gun, which is, again, strength 4 APD 6 flamer. One becomes an akathist. This gives you, like with grotesque, an extra attack and an extra bit of leadership. So they're now leadership 9. He may take one of these. A Stinger Pistol is a Poison 2 Plus Pistol. Venom Blade, Mind Phase Gauntlet, I've mentioned. Hex Rifle, this is a Sniper, AP4, uh, so Rending, always wounds on a 4 Plus. And anyone wounded by it must take a Wounds Test on their Starting Wounds value or die. So pretty powerful for 15 points. 
Um, scissor hand, I've mentioned, Fledge Call, I've talked about Agonizer, Poison 4 plus Power Weapon, Electro Corrosive Whip, Power Weapon, and anyone wounded is half strength for the rest of that round. Again, Raider and Venom are your available transports. They will be in my next video, which I'll look at the troops and the transports. Uh, Mandrakes, weapon skill, blizzard skill 4, strength 4, toughness 3, 1 wound, initiative 5, 2 attacks, legion fate, and no armor save. They have an evil looking blade, which is basically a melee weapon, 15 points, and you may upgrade one to a night fiend, which gives you an extra attack and leadership point. Uh, fleet, night vision, and pain tokens. Infiltrate, move through cover, stealth, so a 6 plus cover save, basic, a 5 plus invulnerable to negate that non existent armor, and bail blast. When Mandrakes gain a pain token, they gain the Bale Blast power, which is Strength 4, AP 4, Assault 2, Pinning, and 18 inch range. So it's actually quite powerful for sneaking around and sniping off units who don't have a uh, power armor or equivalent. And of course with Infiltrate, that's what they're going to do. Then you have the Harlequins. These guys are both in Eldar and Dark Eldar Codex. There's a lot in the background about why. Anyway, they are Weapon Skill 5, BS4, Strength 3, Toughness 3, 1 Wound, Initiative 6, 2 Attacks, Leadership 9, and no armor. They have Hollow Suits, which give them a 5 plus Invulnerable. Uh, yeah, 5 plus Invulnerable. Their Flip Belts um, ignore difficult terrain. A Shuriken Pistol is in the Eldar Codex and in the rulebook. That's all it says. See the 40k rulebook. I'm guessing it's around the same strength as a Lazar Bolt Pistol. But don't take that as law. Um, a Shadow Seer can have Hallucinogen Grenades, which are basically the plasma grenades that you see on all your other Dark Eldar units. Um, they have Fleet, Dance of Death, all their melee attack... No, they have Furious Charge and Hit and Run. Which is pretty powerful, actually. So, and get in, cause some damage, and then get out again. And the Shadow Seer has the Veil of Tears power. This is a psychic power, technically, although you don't take a psychic test for it. And because it's a blessing power, I don't think you can deny it either. So, when it goes off, all units who want to shoot at the Harlequins roll 2d6 and double it. If they're not in that distance, that range, they may not fire at all. They can't just change target, they can't fire at all. So it's pretty useful and very good at getting your Harlequins into melee or stopping and getting sniped on turn 1. Any model may take a Harlequin's Kiss, which gives them Rending. And up to two models may take a Fusion Pistol, which is Strength 8, AP 1, 6 inch range Melter. So once you're within 3 inches, it's basically a Melter Gun. Although most of the time it's just a Strength 8, AP 1 Pistol, which is still damn powerful. Uh, one Harlequin may become a Death Jester. He has a Shrieker Cannon. This is 24 inch range, strength 6, AP 3, 3 shots pinning, so very powerful. A Shadow Sea I've already mentioned, so for that you'll get the Hallucinogen Grenades and the Veil of Tears power. And one Harlequin may become a Troop Master for 20 points, which gives you an extra attack and an extra point of leadership. Um, beyond that, there is no benefit, and he has the option of a free power weapon or Harlequin's Kiss. Um, the power weapon would cost probably 10 or 15 points elsewhere, so I don't know if it's worth the trade-off. The Harlequin's Kiss is only 4 points on regular models, so if you're just looking for more of those, then look elsewhere. But I can see why you take a Troop Master, just for background purposes, if nothing else. Carbolite Trueborn are your next choice. These are 12 points, weapon skill, wizard skill 4, strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, initiative 5, 2 attacks, leadership 9, and a 5 plus armor save. Um, and the Dracon, their character, has an extra attack. They have Splinter Rifles, which are Poison 4 plus AP 5 Rapid Fire, and Night Vision Fleet Power from Pain, same as everybody else. Um, they may exchange the rifle for a pistol and melee weapon for free, and or Shard Carbine. This is 5 points extra, obviously, as you can see, and it is Poison 4 plus, 3 shots, AP 5, 80 and inch range. So, less range, but more shots. It's um, I don't know if it's a worthy trade-off, depends. If you put them in transports, I'd definitely say Shard Carbines over Splinter Rifles. Um, up to four may take shredders and blasters. A blaster is strength eight, AP two, lance. Um, I think it's about eighteen inch range. A shredder is twelve inch range, strength six, AP nothing, blast. So you lose your armor cracking power, but you gain some strength uh, and a blast. Up to two may take splinter cannons or dart lances. A dart lance is thirty six inch range, strength eight, AP two, lance. Uh, and a splinter cannon is a twin profile, really. Both profiles are 36 inch range, poison 4 plus AP 5. However, it has two fire modes, assault 4 or heavy 6. It depends. So you can either move and fire 4 shots or stand still and fire 6. It's up to you. 
Um, you then may take plasma and haywire grenades. If you're going anywhere near a vehicle or you think vehicles are going to come after you, haywire grenades. And because Dark Elder don't have much access to things like power fists, haywire grenades are your best anti-tank or anti-walker option, I would suggest. Um, as I said, you may take a Dracon. He may take Ghost Plate Armor for a 4 plus armor and a 6 plus invulnerable. Phantasm Grenade Launch, giving him and his squad assault and defensive grenades. A Blast Pistol is uh, Pistol Strength 8 AB2 Lance. Venom Blade Power Weapon Agonizer. Um, I don't know if Trueborn are that much better than regular Carlite -like Warriors in the troop section because they can't claim objectives, but they have an extra attack and some more heavy weapon options. Worth it? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Then we have the Hecatrix Blood Bride, same idea, but with witches. 13 points, weapon skill BS 4, strength toughness 3, 1 wound, initiative 6, 2 attacks, leadership 9, 6 plus save. Um, they have the dodge invulnerable save, so it's a 4 plus invulnerable only in melee, so at range they have a rubbish 6 plus armour and that's it. Combat drugs, which could give you a pain token I suppose. Um, splinter pistol, plasma grenade and a white suit, or a witch suit, I'm still not sure which is which which is actually so if you could let me know in the comments I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, for every three you may swap your pistol and melee weapon for razor flail, hydro gauntlets or chardonnay and impaler. I covered these in the video I talked about the succubus which I put up on Friday. Um, the hydro gauntlets give plus d6 attack instead of plus one for two melee weapons. Chardonnay and impaler are two melee weapons and everyone in base to base has minus one attack. And the Razor Flails give you rerolls to hit and wound, as well as giving you plus one attack for two melee weapons. So I'm a big fan of Razor Flails, but Hydro Gauntlets as well. Maybe less so the Shardnet, depends on what you're up against. Again, Haywire Grenades are available to you. Again, I would recommend these, particularly because anything in a transport vehicle suddenly has something to fear from these guys. One Blood Bride may become a Siren, which again just gives you plus one attack. She may take a Blast Pistol. I would recommend Blast Pistols on Dracons um, and Sirens because they're going to be getting up close and it's better than a pistol with Poisoned, I think. Uh, she may take a Phantasm Grenade Launcher, same as the Dracon, and Venom Blade Power Weapon Agonizer. With Blood Brides, I see the same problem as I see with um, Trueborn. They can do everything Witches can do. Yes, I think they have a slightly... They're more attacks, so they'll be better in melee, so they're probably a better choice than Trueborn would be. But... Anything they can do, witches can do, and witches can claim objectives. But it's up to you, really. I don't know. Um, feel free to let me know. Both squads have access to the Raider and Venom, which, as I said, I'm covering in my next video in this series. So that is all for the Elite section. As I say, um, a couple of things I want to check with you guys. Would you take Blood Brides and Trueborn? Because, I, in my opinion, I think Warriors and Witches can do that job just as well as they can. Um, the other question is, how do you pronounce it? Is it Wikes? Is it Witches? Somebody let me know because I'm getting rather annoyed by it now. Um, that's all for today, as I say. So be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more, to keep checking out the playlist. I will have up tomorrow. No, no, hang on. I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow. The day before was my heresy video, so go and check that out. Um, my name is Michael, and I will see you all again.